So, uh, as you know by now, I just ran a marathon. And I'm not sure why I signed up for it, what made me do it, but I did it. And I decided that I wasn't going to tell anyone because, here, let me put this up. I said I wasn't going to tell anyone because I kind of just like wanted to do something for myself without having, oh my God, there's a spider. <laughs> I see a spider. Tom, spider. <sighs> Love you. Um, but I didn't want to tell anyone that I was doing this race because I kind of just wanted to do something for myself and <coughs> bless you. I feel like a lot of um, the time I'm like, not like I don't feel pressure to tell everyone everything I'm doing, but like anytime you like, I don't know. I think that when you're training for a marathon, it's very like personal. And then like people insert their opinions about what you should be eating or what you should be drinking or how long you should be training for <laughs> or what, bless you, or like, just asking questions about it and also I tried training for a marathon this is my this is my third time now and each time I've gotten injured so I've gotten up to like one time I even got up to 19 miles and I got injured and so it was so defeating when I like had already told people that I was doing it um and then I didn't get to do it so I was like really bummed about that so I was like you know what I'm just gonna not tell anyone that I'm doing it and I'm just gonna go out there and do it so I decided in like July that I was gonna try to train for it and I went like started my training I guess it was like end of August kind of because September October November no actually end of July I started my training so beginning of August um, and I was having a little bit of foot pain which has happened to me a couple times I've had a stress fracture in my foot so I was kind of hesitant to keep going so then I took two weeks off and I was like you know what I'm just gonna do the half marathon and then I realized that like, okay, maybe my foot was just bruised or something was wrong with it. So I went on with my training, was very careful. I took my rest days um, and it felt fine. So I just kept going and each week I would add another mile to my long run and then another mile to my long run and then another mile to my long run until I eventually got up to like 17 miles and I was like, wait, I should just do the marathon. So I decided to sign up for the marathon. So I signed up like a month before the actual race. Um, so it's like very, very late in the game. Um, but I just kind of decided just to go for it. And so I got up to 18 miles, 19 miles, and then I did a 20 mile run. And um, it felt okay. Like everything felt okay. And so like I started to tell, like I told my parents, obviously Tom knew, Tom's my boyfriend by the way. Um, my, I told, told my girlfriends, I told just like people that were close to me. I didn't tell anyone on Instagram just because it's not like I was holding it from anyone, but I just wanted to do something for me. And I just wanted to not have to answer to a million questions about like, am I eating enough? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? I just wanted to have a personal journey because like, what if then like a week before the race I got injured and I couldn't do it. So I was just like, you know what? Just like go do this. Don't tell a soul. Like maybe someone will figure it out and that's fine. But I just went for it and I feel really good about the fact that I got out there and ran a marathon. So as far as training went, I followed the Hal Higdon training intermediate or I guess like novice to intermediate. Um, I can link that below, but it's like a very basic, easy training plan that has a lot of like people recommend doing that on. Um, so I had that recommended by a lot of different people. So I was like, sure, I'll do that one. Um, and it just has you go up to basically 20 miles and then you like do certain running during the week, which I actually, totally honest, I did not run a lot during the week. I just did like maybe like one or two, four or five miles, but I was doing like flywheel and I did some upper body workouts. So I was trying to do some cross training. Um, but the, the gist of the story is that like, I didn't truly follow a training plan, but I loosely did. So I we can definitely share that one. Um, I didn't follow any like specific diet or any different thing the week before the marathon. I upped my carbs a lot. Um, but I just basically went out there and just did the long runs. And I knew if I did the long runs that I would probably be okay to finish it. Um, and then I got up to the 20. Um, and I did. And so, yeah. And so part of the other reason was that why I really wanted to do it is that my dad, um, when he turned 60, so he like runs marathons kind of like he does done like four or five. Um, when he turned 60, he said that, that his 60, like his marathon on his 60th year was going to be his last one. So I was training with him and I ended up getting injured. So I didn't ever get to run the race with him, which was such a bummer. 
Um, and he looked at me and I was like, dad, this can't be your last one because I need to run one with you. And so he was secretly training for this one as well too. And he was like, when he got up to like 14, I was like, dad, are you going to do it? Because I'll do it if you do it. And he's like, I think I'm going to do it. So we've both been training. I'm in the city. He's at home and we've both been training. And so that has been, that was like a huge motivator for me just to make sure that like I get to run one marathon with my dad. So, so yeah, that's a super special part of it. And part of the reason why I decided to do it. Just ran two and a half hours, 15.8 miles, and wow, I am exhausted, you guys. So I figured it'd be fun to document some of this journey because I have never run a marathon before. I've gotten all the way up to 19 miles and then got seriously injured, so praying that doesn't happen this time. I'm going to do stretching. But yeah, it is a beautiful morning. I just got back from Expo, and I figured that I would go out there and do my long run this morning on a Saturday, get it done with for the weekend. So 15.8 miles just happened. Um, I'm tired, and I was hurting probably from mile four. My legs were just tired, and I think it's from all the walking at Expo. So it's gonna be interesting to see how I do over the next two months. I wanna do that half marathon. I've wanted to do it forever. My dad turned 60 like two years ago and wanted to do his 60th was his last one. And then I got injured and I was like, no, no, you have to do one more with me. So we'll see. But I am going to stretch and take care of myself because I need to rehydrate and refill so that I don't get injured. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be an interesting journey. I'll show you guys along with all what I'm eating each time. I think it'll be fun to like do this little marathon running journey together because I've never ran a marathon. I ran two half marathons, three half marathons. Um, and I was never a runner growing up. So I'm out there running and people are sprinting by me that I'm like, I don't care as long as I get it done. So I feel pretty on top of the world right now, but it's not always easy to like get up and go and do it. So it's like getting out there, doing it, pushing through when you're tired. And yeah. So I use this noon. Try berry to rehydrate. It has like, it's like kind of salty. It has electrolytes in it. It really helps me to stay like not super, super crazy thirsty the rest of the day. It just makes me feel really good. And then I'm just starting off with this peanut butter primal kitchen protein bar because I've heard I'm eating a lot of stuff like right after, but in about like four hours, I'll be like ravenous. So I'm gonna start with this. I'll probably have some oatmeal soon. Um, and then that's it for now. Oh my god, I'm like exhausted. Just did 17.2 miles. It is Saturday, October. I guess getting September. I don't even it's 23rd, 19th. I don't know. It's Saturday. That was really hard. I ran with Alyssa for some of it, my friend. And we definitely went slower, but I picked up the pace at the end. And 17 miles was hard, but this was easier than last week's one. So I feel good about that. I am done my workout at 10:30 in the morning and now I guess we just go hang for us today. We're going to beer fest. I earned every beer that I ran. I'm not that sweaty. Temperatures are 75. You guys, I just ran 17.2 miles. Two hours, 50 minutes. Feels good. Good morning, Philadelphia. Mile 18.5. Half mile still home. My legs are tired. This one ate the good one. About halfway through. And I've been nursing it since. It's been helping. Just did a very long run. Um, and I took this U, which I actually sold half of it left because I like nurse it like for the last, probably like the last, I don't know, seven or six or seven miles. I'm nursing it. Um, but my legs are really tired and I realized that when you eat and drink everything on vacation and then you go to run, it's really painful. But I got out there and it's a beautiful morning um, and it always feels so good when I'm done. And yeah. Also that is salt. That's really disgusting. Ew, oh my God, I'm salty. <laughs> so I was supposed to do 13 miles this morning. It's like my cutback week because I did 19 last week. So let's do 13 this week and then I'll do 20 the next two weeks. I woke up just feeling like I do not want to run. I'm going to do it tomorrow, which is we Sunday. It'll be October 20th. Or, yeah, 20th. And then 
I realized it was supposed to pour rain all day tomorrow. So it's now 3.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday. And luckily we don't have many plans this weekend. So I think I'm going to go try to do a run. We'll see how it goes. I'm trying to do 30 miles. So wish me luck. Also, no fuel for this run. I'll bring something just in case. But I just ate a very big lunch. So I had like oatmeal, peanut butter, banana. And then I had some granola after that. So I'm like, I ate that about like an hour ago. So I'm thinking that that will fuel me and I will be good enough. I mean, I'm going to be running for like two hours. So we'll see. 13 miles done. Honestly, now I'm like even more tired than after 19. I know this can happen sometimes, but ow. I'm going to recover for the rest of the night. And then I got 20 next week. I'm scared. Eighteen miles down. Last solo long run. Next run is with the All City Twenty Miler with other people. I think my dad's gonna come down, and that'll be my last long run. Felt pretty good. Legs were not as tired this time. Just was bored, ready to get home. Didn't even take a goo. Didn't take anything. Wasn't hungry. Stopped for water twice, but that's it. Good morning. I am about to go out. I literally just rolled out of bed. Like, can you not tell? Um, I'm about to go out my 20 mile run. I'm kind of scared. But I think it's like that good excitement scared where it like will power you through. I downloaded um, Dirty Dawn podcast. So I have six episodes, each 40 minutes. And I play them at 1.5 speed because I like it when it's like a little bit faster. Um, but that's going to keep me entertained for the next three and a half hours. So it's going to be a long run. I'm kind of like pooping my pants with nervousness. But um, I'm also like testing out a race day outfit. So well, not, <laughs> not the stop. Trust me. Oh, let me flip it. Can I flip this around? I guess not because it's video. Um, so these are the Wonder Under pants from Lululemon. I'm going to see how they hold up. They're really high rise, which I like. Um, I feel like that's probably best for long distance run, but stay tuned. So these are the shoes that I run in. They are really old and I need a new pair, but like I have the superstition now where I'm not going to get a new pair a month before the race. Like I've been training in these and I shouldn't slide them on like that. They tell you that you should like definitely unbutton them every or untie them every time, but I'm probably the worst runner in the world. <laughs> slide, slide one. I've also had these dorky ass socks. But they help me not get blisters. And I like them. In terms of race fuel, I'm going to bring these blocks. They are salted watermelon, which is the best flavor because they're like salty and sweet. Um, there's like five blocks in here. And I don't even know. I did 18 miles last weekend and I didn't use any fuel at all. So I'm going to actually like unpack these and then put them in this little container, which is, this is my race belt. And I put my phone in here and I wear it around my waist. It's super, super dorky, but this is the one that I normally use, but I actually don't want to use the goose anymore. I want to just use the box. So I'm just going to do the box today. So yeah. Ooh. Out here doing it, baby. I think I'm at like mile four out of 20. No big deal. 20 miles done. Just did 20. Legs are sore, but felt good. Last long run, baby. Good morning. I just got up. Oh, I want to sleep even longer, but I gotta go do my 12 mile run got this new camera so it's a little bit better than my iPhone videos but I'm going out to do my run 12 miles and then next week we have eight miles and then we're done and marathon is in two weeks from tomorrow let's do it so I downloaded wow I have a lot of apps but I downloaded this the cold podcast and it's like a murder mystery. And so that's what I'm going to listen to for the next two hours as I run. I like to listen to murder mysteries because it keeps me very entertained. 
All right, so I figured I would show you what I'm wearing today, but then I will definitely do like a whole series on what I run in, like my different shoes, um, the different outfits, but today is 27 degrees outside. So I'm still in my PJs, but it's 27 degrees outside today. So I have to dress warm. I'm thinking, okay, there's my messy closet, but I'm gonna wear this vest. It's a North Face vest, but I'm gonna do a full lowdown, but this is just my outfit for today. They're both Lululemon pants, this Lululemon top, I can link them all for you, and then this bra, I don't know why. It's like a shitty little bra, but it gives me good luck, so I'm wearing it. Oh, and then I also use this belt, but I probably won't because I have the vest today, but if I, if, like, I've been training and it's been warmer, so I just like put my phone in here, it fits my phone put my key and then if I need like race fuel which today I'm not eating any fuel because it's only 12 miles and I just don't need it for 12 miles but like if I was doing anything like 17 18 19 I would take some gels good luck bra yeah 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 let's go all right just did 12 I am getting towards the end just did 12 my knee and foot were hurting for the first four which is not good, so I like kind of vowed not to run this week. So we'll see, maybe I'll do like a four and a three. But then I'm done after that. I have one eight next weekend, and then it's rest time, then it's marathon time. Just got done 12 miles, and I'm feeling okay. My knee hurts a little bit, um, but I figured I would show you guys how I recover. Um, which is not really anything. Sorry, Tom's making noise in the background. But I figured I'd show you how I recover and then what I eat and all of my running gear. So let's go do that. All right, so my running gear. I am obsessed with basically all of the Lululemon stuff for running because it doesn't fall down and it's very comfortable. So I will show you. So these are better for like, I was, I mean, most of my training was done in the summer. So I had to wear short sleeves or tank tops. Um, this is my favorite short sleeve shirt from there. Um, I will link it below, but it's so comfortable. I have it in black and this color and it's very like stretchy. Very, very good for like if you're sweating. And then I also have it actually in four colors. One of them's in the wash. But I have it in the long sleeve. It has thumb holes. And I've been wearing this. I'm probably thinking I'm going to wear one of these on the actual race day. So TBD on that. But it's super stretchy. I absolutely love it. And then I also, as I said, I was training mostly in the warm weather. But now it's starting to get cold. So it's kind of throwing me for a loop. But I have the Lulu shorts and I forget exactly what they're called but I will also link them but these are the best running shorts ever like literally so comfortable they don't ride up perfect um it took me a while to find a good running short and then I also like these ones from Outdoor Voices which I was really happy with these as well so I thought I would share them here but they're really really comfortable and a lot of them have let's see if I can find it like this one has like a back zipper right here but a lot of them have like these have some sort of spot where you can put um your key like right in there in a little card or something which is nice because if you don't want to bring anything on your run and then for sports bras I don't really do anything in particular this one's just a champion this one's just under armor but obviously you can tell I like black and white and gray because those are my colors um pretty particular about my socks as well I need them to have some sort of back lip because I do get blisters so I ordered these off of Amazon these are the bearing I think they're called um, but they are so comfortable and I've been doing all of my races and all of my runs in them. And then for pants, I've slowly moved on to the pants because it has gotten chillier. And my all-time favorite pant is this Lululemon. I believe these, these are the Wonder Unders, but they do not fall down at all. And that is the biggest thing because I refuse to be pulling up my pants the entire time I'm running. So these are clutch. And then I have a pair of Athleta. These are, these don't fall down either. These are softer. Um, and another pair of Lulu, but those are the best pants for running long distance. They do not fall down at all, like I said. Um, and then this little belt, which I've been using all summer. It has been like a lifesaver. I got it off of Amazon. It's kind of dorky, I know that, but like I need something to hold my shit together. So I put, would put my phone in here and it fits a full iPhone. It fits up to the 11 Pro. And then I would put my key and my fuel in here. And that is literally just buckled around my waist. Boop. and it would save me I loved it um, and then I've just started 
if you saw on my longer runs, I've just started using my vest. This is the best vest ever. It is from the North Face. I will link the exact one, but it fits super snug on you. I'll try it on so you can see. Um, it fits super snug, but I love it. And it just literally keeps your core warm. So if it's chilly out, but your arms are free, and I highly recommend running in a vest if you don't want to run like a big baggy sweatshirt. I also forgot to talk about my shoes. The most important part. I have been running in this pair of shoes, not this exact pair, but this type, the Ghost by Brooks, for the last four years. Never fail me. Obsessed. Love them so much. They're just so comfy and they're good for like medium sport. I also put in like a little like extra foot thing, like a little insert and it helps me just so because I am prone to getting stress fractures. So yeah, I love these so, so much. So comfortable. They're good for a foot that doesn't have any like weird pronations if you're just like an average runner. So this is my running fuel. Um, I personally like the salted watermelon flavor of everything. So this is the goo. I normally take about like a half to one on a long run and it has to be like a run that's more than 16 miles. I normally don't eat anything um, else besides that, but I take some of these blocks as well. So like I'll have maybe one or two of these during a, like a 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 mile run. And then I'll have maybe half of one of these. Um, I can either, I can just do like just one of these or just like two of these. That's fine. I normally don't eat a lot. I don't know. My stomach's a little weird, but I need something. And then when I come home, I have one of these noon record, uh, sport hydration things. It's like a little, sorry, I can't talk. It's like a little tablet that basically just rehydrates you and has a lot of like electrolytes in it. So I like it. Um, they have a bunch of different flavors and stuff. But yeah, then I just go and after I'm done like my runs, I'll like wait like a half hour and then I make my like lunch or breakfast or whatever it is. here and talk about like a few questions because I kind of just went out here and like ran this marathon and didn't tell anyone and like as I said earlier um, but I feel like, like I owe a little bit of an explanation um, and kind of just like what happened up until the marathon because as I showed on Instagram my knee was like seriously hurting and this was just within the last like 10 days of the marathon actually it was like so the marathon was on Sunday and so I was supposed to go out um, for my last eight mile run on the Friday before. So eight days before, or nine days before. Seven, eight, nine, okay. <laughs> nine days before the run. Um, and I went out for the run and I am two miles in and I'm like, what? Like there's some serious knee pain going on here. And I was so mad, I was so upset. And I was just like, no, like it's, it's gonna go away. Like this is just something I just need to keep running on. Like it's not anything bad. So I just like ran another mile and I was like, this is not getting better. Like what? And I'm starting to panic because I'm thinking, oh my God, in nine days I'm running a marathon and I cannot, I'm like limping right now. I call my dad, I call Tom. I'm like bawling my eyes out. I'm like, Tom, you need to come pick me up. Um, I'm not gonna be able to run the marathon. I'm calling my dad. I'm like, it's done, I'm done. I can't believe I can't do this. I trained all this much and I'm just like having like a big old pity party for myself. And 
Um, that basically, that morning I decided to just like take like a personal day and I went to Rothman Orthopedics. They have an urgent care. Went to the doctor, he did all the tests on my leg, got an x-ray, and they basically found out that there was nothing structur structurally wrong with my leg. It was just inflamed. Um, so he basically said, I'm totally okay to run on it if I can handle the pain. But like I knew what the pain was and it's excruciating. And I, and I was like, there's no, there's no way I couldn't even run two miles. I couldn't even run three miles. Like there was way too much pain. Um, so he gave me a uh, over the counter or not over the counter prescription medicine for inflammation. It was basically like a stronger ibuprofen. He basically just said, take it easy and then test it out the next week. So I decided just to like not run at all. And was just going to go out there on the day of the marathon and just give it my best, even though I knew I wasn't going to, I was going to have to drop out. Um, so I just decided to completely rest. And if you follow me on Instagram stories, you saw that I was like stretching a lot, foam rolling. Um, I had a couple physical therapists send me some like stretches and strengthening stuff to get my quad strong and the muscles around my knee. And then I went to acupuncture and I think acupuncture like really helped me. Um, they did a bunch of stuff fixing like my hip and my knee. And I think that really helped. Um, but then also I did like a lot of strengthening and then I did like um, stretches and I just took a week off but then it was the day before the marathon and it was Saturday and this is why you saw that video of me being like I'm not gonna run this like I don't know what I'm doing I'm not I'm not gonna finish the race I debated filming this because I know I'm not gonna finish but I need to have a positive attitude because I can do it deep breath big day today Here's all my stuff. Drinking that hydration drink. It's one of these. Noon. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Got my toast over there. Let's do it. That was because on the Saturday before, I went out for just like a two mile shakeout run. So I was like, I have to at least see if I can do two miles because I can't show up at the start and literally not even be able to do like walk a few steps. So I did that and within two miles, my knee hurt and I was just like so defeated. Like again, like my poor father and my boyfriend, like I called them both and I'm like crying hysterically. Like this sucks. Like I trained all this and I can't even run the race. So... I was just like icing my knee all day and just like what do I do do I even show up tomorrow like what do I do and like I that day I didn't run with any braces or anything so I had this one patella strap oh, hold on Amazon Prime's here so I got a patella strap which is like a little thin band that goes around your knee I can actually link the one that I used um but it is like a, basically it supports your kneecap and like the problem with my knee is that it wasn't tracking right so it was like getting inflamed each time I ran so I decided to just put that knee strap on my knee and just tie it so tight and I was like I'm just gonna try this and see if it works um so Sunday morning came I did like all of the carb loading did everything and Sunday morning came and I just decided like I'm just gonna go out there and do it so I woke up at five ate breakfast I had like banana and peanut butter on toast um I had a hydration tablet I um had two of the over-the-counter prescription medicine why do I keep saying over-the-counter two of the prescribed medicines for my knee um I brought some ibuprofen in my pocket for as I was bracing and I just decided to show up and I saw my dad there and so we were running it together and he um, I was just looking at him. I was so defeated. I started crying at the start before I even started because I was like, I'm not going to be able to do this. And I tied that patella strap so freaking tight. Like, I think I cut all the circulation off of my foot. But I did the first two miles and then I did mile three. And my dad's like, I can't believe you're still here. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm still here. Because my plan was just to drop out whenever. Like, I basically couldn't take the pain anymore. Um, and so I was kept running three and then we did four and then we did five and then we did six and I was like oh my god dad I just ran six and he was like okay but don't like get, don't end yourself more like st stop when you're done and then like we eventually got up to I got up to mile 10 and I could not believe I was at mile 10 and 
that's when it really started hurting and i was like oh shit like i'm actually done and i started thinking like oh my god that's it's mile 10 like that's like an hour and a half of running i was like oh my god like i actually am gonna do this marathon thing well it hurt really bad and i just stopped to the side and i tightened that patella strap so much i think my leg was probably purple underneath um but i ended up running until like mile 13 it didn't hurt anymore mile 14 didn't hurt 15 didn't hurt 16 didn't hurt 17 didn't hurt 18 didn't hurt it started to hurt a little bit around 19, but I was like, I'm here now. And I just kept like loosening and tightening, loosening and tightening. And you guys, it was the most magical feeling. Like 18, mile 18, there was beer. And we took a shot, like a little sip of beer. And then we got on, we went down to Maniunk. We did the turnaround. We're back up and it's like mile 20, mile 21, 22. They're flying by and I'm just like, I was feeling so good. Like I, my physical endurance was totally there. Um, I was well trained. It was just my knee that was bothering me. But, like I was not tired. Like we got increasingly faster as the race went on. Like we started like a very slow 11 minute mile. We ended up with like I think like our last mile, our last few miles were like 10 minute miles, but which is still slow, but like way better with when you have like basically a really hurt knee. Um, so that was the most amazing feeling. As I'm running up, like you get to 25 and then you get to 26 and you're right there and it's like everyone's cheering you on and you have points you left. You're running by, I can hear my girlfriends and Tom and like everyone cheering me on. And I'm just like crying hysterically as I'm like running down towards the finish. I was so emotional. I ran my first marathon and you guys, it was the best thing ever. Like, I mean, I don't have any plans to do another one soon because that was really tiring on my body. So I'm gonna take a little break from running, but it was so much fun. Um, so I wrote down some of the things you guys asked me because you were like, how come you didn't share about this? And as I said earlier, like I really just wanted to do something for myself. Um, I didn't just like decide to wake up one day and just like do it. Like I knew that this was my plan. Um, I had planned this since the end of July and I basically was just like, I don't really wanna be obligated to have to do it. I just want to do it for me if I'm up for it. Um, and if I didn't get injured, which I did, so it was kind of good that I didn't really say anything. Um, but no, it wasn't just like a rash decision one day and I woke up and did it. Um, and then the, my, for what I wore on the day of, I was kind of just decided that it was very chilly and it was very rainy. So like we had rain, wind, and snow. And so I did like um, Wonder Under Lululemon pants and then Lululemon top. And then I did a vest from North Face, which I am obsessed with. Um, and then I did a um, rain jacket that I got from Amazon that I just like found one because I found that it was gonna be, or I looked at the weather and it was gonna be really rainy. So I was just like, I need to have some sort of rain jacket. So I ordered a rain running jacket and it was perfect. Um, I took three goos along the race. So I was starving the entire race. I had a half of a cliff bar, three goos, which they were disgusting. I didn't want them and I wanted like real food. And so like the cliff bar was the best thing because it would taste like sweet and salty. Really like that. Um, I did we stopped at every water, every Gatorade. Um, because my dad really likes to hydrate. And then what else did I have? Did I have anything? Oh, and then I had three gel blocks. So like three energy blocks. They kind of like, taste like Starburst in a way. Um, but so I had those. Um, but that was all I had for eating. And then afterwards, the best thing to give you when you're done the marathon, plus it was like 35 degrees and rainy and snowy, is hot chicken stock. And it was so good. It was the best thing. I really enjoyed sipping on it. Um, but that is all I did for eating. Then afterwards, we went out to lunch. And then we had Friendsgiving. So I ate plenty yesterday. I actually ate too much. Like, my stomach hurt. Um, and so, like, that basically just wraps everything up. I mean, like, it was the most amazing day, you guys. I had so much fun. It encouraged me to just, like, while I don't encourage anyone to get hurt, it just encouraged me to, like, if you, like, put your mind to something, you can do it. And it's just like, that's the coolest thing. Like I never thought really I could ever do a marathon. Like I, I, I it, before college, I was never a runner. Like it was just amazing. So it was the best and I felt really incredible and it was just such a fun day. So I won't be doing one for a while, but maybe one day again, but not now. So.